Good evening and welcome to Sunday Evening Vespers. Happy New Year. Um, just a couple of announcements for this week. I'd like to say that tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. we will have the Chaplain's Movie Matinee and we'll be showing Wildlife. And we do have one spot available in that. If you're interested, please call the hotline. Thursday, we will have Connections, the Chaplain Discussion Group, at 11 a.m. here in North Village in room 373 and in South Village at 3.30 in the Raleigh Room. And if you're interested in that, please feel free to call the hotline again for reservation. Later on in the month, on January 19th, we are beginning a book discussion. We figured January is kind of a long month and we would start the year off with something very hopeful. We'll be discussing, discussing the book Joy, Finding Everlasting Happiness. And it's a book written by the Dalai Lama and Bishop Desmond Tutu and their conversation about joy. It's a wonderful book. I'd like to thank Betty Sharp for playing the piano for us. And now let us begin by preparing ourselves by listening to the prelude. And now for our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Like sages from afar, come and behold your Christ. Let us fall on our knees in his honor. Let us lift our voices in praise of his name. Our first hymn is We Three Kings. Please feel free to sing along in your apartments or um, those of us here, you can join in by um, humming.
Will you please pray with me? O oh God, Lord of all that exists, you revealed your only begotten Son to every nation by the guidance of a star. Bless this time. Fill each of us with the light of Christ that our concern for others may reflect your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel scripture this evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A couple of weeks ago, we experienced what scientists call the Great Conjunction of 2020. On December 21st, the winter solstice, the longest night, there was the presence of the Christmas star. It's when the planets of Jupiter and Saturn aligned. Now there are dis different estimates of when this last occurred and when it's supposed to happen next, but it's around 800 years, it's believed. The brightness illumined the sky and it was hard to miss with the naked eye. I saw it not exactly that night, but the next night, and I thought it was an airplane. I thought it was something so bright. Now, many are very hopeful about the timing of the Christmas star, happening at the end of a long and challenging year during these bleak times. One article I read cautioned not to read too much meaning into the Great Conjunction. It's merely a scientific occurrence. But I couldn't help but think of Epiphany and the Magi as I noticed the star. It was magnificent. And it said to make a believer out of even the biggest skeptic. It's so symbolic, the brightest light against the darkest sky. It seems representative of a sign of hope, a sign of light during a dark year. Now today we celebrate the second Sunday of Christmas and we celebrate Epiphany, which is normally on January 6th. It's when the Magi follow the star and they come and see the newborn king, this new life, this new life that reveals hope. I read a devotion that shared about how in the Celtic world, 
there is the practice of what is called reading from the two books of God, the big book and the little book. The book, big book refers to God, our creator, refers to, refers, refers to the vastness of God, to everything that has been, have to come into the world. In the beginning was the word, says John, and all things have come into being through the word, everything that is essentially a sounding of God, the universe being like a sacred vibration, a living text that we can learn to read. It includes the movement of the stars, the flowing of the seasons. But there's also a little book, physically little, the book of scripture in which we listen to God speaking to us through those prophets who have gone before us, our fathers, mothers of the faith, the experiences of God, their mistakes, their failings, their successes, as well as their hope and their wisdom are passed on to us so that we can learn the way in which God speaks into the human heart and has witnessed the steadfast love of God throughout history. So what we're invited to do is to listen to these two books in stereo. The big book, the vastness of God our creator, and the little book of scripture. If we listen only to the book of scripture and ignore the big book, we may miss the vastness of God in all things. And if we listen only to the big book and not the little book, we, we miss the intimacy of the voice of God speaking in the secret places of our hearts. The challenge is to listen to both of these books, not just individually, but together in community, faithfully learning so that we come into being in relationship with God. I think we look through at this familiar story of the Magi through both of these lenses, so to speak, or through both of these speakers, the writer writes. So we see the vastness, but also feel that personal meaning for each of us. And when we do this, I think we see the symbolism and the meaning in this story. The word epiphany comes from Greek, and it means revealing or appearing. It focuses on God's revelation in Jesus Christ. Now, the Magi, either astrologers, they were educated people, maybe even Zoroastrian priests were from the East, in the East where was God was not present or worshipped. They were about as far away from the promises of God as you could be. They were seen to be in the darkness. Now there's question about the timing of their visit and how many there actually are. We always came up with three. But in scripture, the East symbolizes a great distance from God. And the Magi came from afar. And that's why one of the reasons why the arrival in Bethlehem of these foreigners is considered to be somewhat of an epiphany. According to the belief of the day, these are not the kind of people we ought to find included in the story of the birth of Jesus, just as the angels appearing to the lowly shepherds was considered an unusual occurrence as well. But there they are, arriving in Bethlehem with their gifts. The gifts are symbolic as well. They symbolize Christ's reign, and they predict maybe a foreshadowing of the meaning of Christ's death. Now the early Christian community considered this event to be eye-opening because it demonstrates God's revealing in Jesus, God being revealed in Jesus and by the Magi. Magi. It means that this message of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Savior, is for everyone. This is a glimpse of the kingdom of God. When the stars have aligned, the Jew and the Gentile, the rich and the poor coming together in harmony, 
The rich don't withhold from the poor. They offer not only necessities, but luxury, these lavish gifts. There's this hint and this glimpse of the kingdom of God. And the rich, the wealthy kings, these astrologers, the educated, the respect, they fall on their knees before a child and a mother. You see the presence of God in Jesus Christ, this gift of new life, that this light of Christ is for everyone. There's another epiphany in the story, a more personal experience, not the epiphany that, that came to the church, but rather the epiphany received by the Magi, this gift of light. What is it that motivates them to fall on their knees and gives their life to Christ? The wise men did come and they worshiped Christ, but they were also expected to pay homage. A proper political act from one person of position to another, not necessarily a religious one. The Magi find the Holy Family and the Bible says, entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. They came to pay homage, to welcome a new leader, but they ended up falling down and worshiping him instead. They had followed the signs and they found Jesus the Messiah and they were overwhelmed. They saw the experience of that love, that peace, the joy, the hope, and the light of Christ and they experienced new life in this Savior as a baby. And so this is a story of people who are as far away from God as you can be, yet they recognize this gift in the light of Christ, this new life. It prompts us to wonder how we read and follow the stars. Where is our signs that might lead us into these awesome experience? What's our epiphany? Where can we say that we've been changed by the presence of God? And maybe we wonder if we could have an experience like the Magi, our lives might be changed. It's interesting to note that whatever the Magi saw, whatever it was, it led them to Jesus. They weren't the only ones who saw it, just like we weren't the only ones who saw the Christmas star. But they were the ones who followed I think it's not a matter of recognizing the signs of God around us, the light, but the willingness to experience it. You know, as we celebrate the new year, the beginning of a new year, I think we all kind of make those resolutions, or maybe we fail to make, we intentionally don't because we know we won't succeed. I think I heard something, it takes six weeks for a habit to form, a new habit to form. We're kind of at the peak of willingness this, in this new year. And we long for light. We long for change. We long to be in the presence of one another where we can touch one another. I think we're longing for light in the darkness of this pandemic, hope that the vaccine brings. You know, we've seen all those tributes of the year that was 2020, and and they say those horrible numbers of all the deaths, but there's also those positive things that came. You know, it's allowed time for us to maybe spend time more in God's word. We take better care of the gifts we treasure. We're more appreciative. One of the magazines um, that I receive is real simple. Something about that title, we're longing to simplify, but in this time, we've, we've had to do that. We've been forced to simplify. But they always come out in the January edition of lightening your life, finding balance and being organized. And there's always this promise that if you follow this diet or this exercise regime or, or organize your home in a certain way, you will have the most joy and the most happiness possible. That's the promise that the world makes to us. But let's stop and remember a moment when things really seemed we seem to have that moment where the stars lined up. 
that the stars were all aligned, when you felt at one not only with yourself and everything, you knew that place that you had arrived is a place where you belong. A moment when you can say, this is why I'm alive. This is my purpose. This is who I am, and this is who I'm meant to be. That moment when the star that you've been following stops and you find yourself overwhelmed with joy. You feel like you've been bathed in light. That's the moment that God wishes for all of us to experience this fullness, this new life in Christ. And see, what God wishes for all of us is that our moments could all be characterized by that kind of light and that love and that joy not only just in this new year to come, but all the time that we have in relationship with God. When like the Magi, we, we find ourselves in that place where we can see the light of Christ, of God's love, and just fall on our knees. Where is that place for us? You see, when we look through the light of Epiphany, we're seeing all that life is sacred and holy. Epiphany is when Jesus is revealed to the world through the eyes of the Magi. It reminds us of the love of God in the flesh when we remember that God is with us, Emmanuel, no matter who we are or where we go. The light of Epiphany helps us to see that all life is sacred and it reveals how we find new life, not only in today, but we find new life <clears throat> in practicing our faith every day. We find new life in returning to those commitments of community. We were just saying how, yes, the holidays have been wonderful, but it would be nice to get back to routine. We find new life in returning to our commitments. We find new life in the commitments of prayerful study, service, listening in our communities of faith we find new life in practicing the love of neighbor we find new life in the worship of god rooted in humility and hope we find new life in our words of confession speaking honestly about ourselves and be knowing that we have been redeemed and forgiven and embracing God's unending forgiveness and grace. You see, God longs for this new life for us. And we find new life in the words of scripture, reading scripture, studying it carefully. We find new life in embracing the silence, discovering God beneath the surface of life. We find new life in the practice of generosity giving of our time, talent, or our resources. We find new life living into all that we're called to be. Maybe having a gentler voice towards others. Maybe it is yielding to simplicity and contentment, but not yielding to apathy. We find new life in returning to old commitments, looking through the light of epiphany and really appreciating and embracing all that is sacred. So as we consider this new year, as we celebrate Epiphany, knowing that we've just seen and witnessed the Christmas star, let's remember God's message for all of us, from the shepherd to the magi. We can make room in our hearts for this love, that is God and Jesus Christ. And I think that Christmas star is a reminder. It's a reminder of the vastness of God's love that comes to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we know that this new love is offered to each of us, this gift of light in the darkness that we hopefully experience more fully this coming year within our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn is the first Noel.
on this day when we celebrate people from afar coming to worship Jesus the Lord, let, us pr let our prayers be as wide as the world. Let us say to God the Father, let the light of Christ shine on all people. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your son Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation and every nation, and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people, that God's people may hear the poor when they cry, have pity on the weak, and open their hearts and hands to the needy. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people, that those who persecute the Lord and those who try to follow him may see his light and be converted. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. For those who are cold, hungry, or homeless, and for the sick and suffering, we especially remember in those members of the Springmore community, Diane Teresis and Mr. Hunz, that they may find strength and hope. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. For those who have died, we remember especially Peggy Blackburn, that she may dwell forever in the perpetual light of God's presence. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people, that all who look for a star to guide them may discover the goodness of the Lord and people full of faith and love. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people that in our Christian communities we may learn like the wise men to share the treasures of our goods and hearts. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. Lord, our God, we rejoice that you have become near to us in Jesus Christ, your son. Let him be the light of life now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Walk as a Child of the Light.
Receive now this blessing, which is the refrain from I want to walk as a child of the light. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let us go forth bearing Christ's light. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our postlude is Shine, Jesus, Shine. Thank you.